When a surprise birthday trip turns into a shocking family betrayal, watch how one teen flips the script and fights back against the golden child. Three days ago, I celebrated my 15th birthday, but things didn't exactly go according to plan. On the morning of my birthday, my parents came up to me, very happily, and told me that to surprise me on my birthday, they had arranged for a family trip to the Pecanos. I was super excited. Being the less important, younger sibling, I don't usually get surprises like this, and I was really happy, however, a couple of hours later, after I was done packing and went down with my bags to leave with my family, I saw that my parents were already out, and it was just my older sister, Alex, 17, female, who was waiting for me downstairs. She is the golden child, the one who can always get our parents to do exactly what she wants, and this time was no different. She seemed very happy, so I instantly knew there was something wrong. When I asked her what was going on, she told me that there was no need for me to pack my bags and I could go up and unpack. At first, I thought the trip had been cancelled altogether, but then she told me that there would be no family vacation for me and handed me a piece of paper with a list of chores written on it. I was very confused, and then she told me that my parents and she had decided that, even though they had surprised me with the vacation in the morning, they had a discussion about this. Alex thinks that because we have our finals coming up in a couple of weeks, it would be much better for me to stay at home and try to study. But she gets to go because she's already done with everything I in the meantime, if I started getting bored without my family while they're away in the Pecanos, I could start working on these tasks that needed to be done around the house. Then she laughed and said that instead of looking upset, I should really be thanking her because she had bought me some time to study and prepare for my finals, rather than waste my time frolicking outside with my family. I was so hurt that I couldn't even bring myself to say anything except to ask where our parents were, and she told me that she was the one who had already sent them off to the airport and stayed back so she could deliver this to me in person because that was her birthday gift to me. She said that my parents wanted to know they were not giving me false hopes, but Alex had brought up my finals which were going to be held in a couple of weeks just after they had surprised us both with the news of the trip, and so they couldn't ignore it and they thought that this was for the best. They had apparently let Alex tell me about this because they couldn't bring themselves to break my heart, and I knew for a fact that Alex loved and relished the opportunity to humiliate me like that. So, I resisted the urge to start crying in front of her and went back upstairs with my bags. I waited until I heard the front door shut, and then I finally broke down and cried for an entire hour. Alex has always hated me, and I have known that, and I've also always known that my parents were just doing whatever she says without thinking much because to them, her word is the holy grail, but I couldn't even imagine that they would do something so cruel and humiliating to me on my birthday, of all days. Alex and I have had our fair share of fights before, and my parents have always taken her side, but this was unimaginable. On the morning of my birthday, after my parents had told me about the surprise trip, I even texted my friends and told them that I wouldn't be able to hang out with them in the evening, as I had planned on doing, and even they had been pretty surprised that my parents had arranged something like this for me. I guess some things are genuinely too good to be true, but I was still pissed after I stopped crying, and the more I thought about my situation, the worse I felt. So, I decided to do something that I knew would piss my parents and Alex off greatly to get back at them. Since I was home by myself, I decided to go into my dad's office and make a bunch of phone calls from my phone to all the important contacts that I found on my dad's MacBook. I invited them to a party in the evening that I had arranged for my parents' anniversary and I wanted to surprise them. I know it was a bit of a last-minute invitation, but I told everyone that I would be really grateful if they were able to show up, and since I'm just a kid, most of his business associates agreed to attend this party that I was throwing I did the same for my mother as well, neither of them had password-protected devices and had made the stupid decision of leaving it all at home, so it was a piece of cake for me. Then, I decided to text Alex's boyfriend on Instagram and told him the same thing and invited him in the evening. I also invited my own friends and had them help me set up the house to make it look like a party. Finally, around 7 in the evening, the guests that I had invited finally started showing up, but they were really shocked to see that my parents were nowhere to be found. 
I kept telling them that it was a surprise for the evening, so they would be able to find out what was going on. Once all the guests had arrived, and I had taken a groupie with all of them, I decided to put my plan into action and told them exactly where my parents were. I told them all about the way that I had been treated, and how my parents always seemed to think that whatever Alex said was what should be followed, and I was basically Cinderella but had never spoken up about any of this until today. Then, I explained to them what exactly had happened on the day of my birthday and how my parents just abandoned me and didn't even bother to explain things to me in person, all because Alex thought it was the right thing to do. I see that a lot of people were extremely shocked since my parents put up a really good act in front of other people of being nice and decent people. But I can tell you for a fact that good people don't do stuff like this to their own kids. Anyway, once I was done telling them all about what happened, I told them that this was exactly why I had thrown this party, so I could expose my friends and my sister, and if I hadn't screwed things up for the three of them badly enough, I also decided to show them all the list of chores that Alex had left to me, and I could see that her boyfriend, who was standing in a corner of the room because he did not have any idea that Alex had this cruel and inhuman streak in her as well. Everyone was quiet after I spoke up and shared what had happened with me, and eventually, I think people realized that there was no point in staying any longer, so some of them left without a word, and some of them bothered to come up to me and console me and then left. The only thing I felt bad about was that I had wasted their time, but I wouldn't worry too much about it because all of them had left, I decided to send the group photo that I had clicked with everybody who had attended the party and send it to my parents and my sister, with a caption that said, had some guests over for my birthday party today. I think we're going to finally get started on the list that Alex left me. It was the perfect plan, and after I sent that message, they responded within seconds, telling me to fix whatever I have done right now, and that they were coming back home on the next flight. I blocked all of them and went to my best friend Fiona's house with my bags, because I knew that that was not my home anymore. Fiona and her parents are really sweet people who always used to tell me that their doors would always be open for me, and I only decided to take them up on their offer now, and move in with them. I don't know how long they're going to be able to support me, but for now, this is all that I have, and I am very grateful to them for opening up their home to me so graciously. Anyway, on the day of my birthday, I didn't hear anything from them, but the next day, they came to me at Fiona's house. I guess nobody was surprised I had chosen to stay with Fiona because they knew that she and I had been the best of friends since we were really little. When they came by, her parents refused to let them in, and I said that they had no business trying to talk to me when I had made it very clear that I was not interested in speaking to them about anything. But my parents started threatening to take legal steps against Fiona's parents, and I got kind of scared, so I told them to let them in, and I would be ready to talk to them. They were furious with me and said that no matter what they had done, I still had no right to involve their business associates in this because now their entire reputation was in ruins and none of their co-workers and associates were willing to even speak to them. Some of them had even blocked my mom and dad and they were blaming me for all of this, which I think is fair because I did orchestrate this entire thing. But I also told them that if they had to show me a bit of kindness and not utterly humiliate me by pulling that stunt on my birthday, I wouldn't have done any of this. I ended up shouting at them for always treating me badly in comparison to Alex and said that she, along with my parents, had ruined my life and I was never going to forgive them for that. Things got really heated and all of us were yelling at each other so much that Fiona's parents had to intervene and Fiona had to take me out of the room to calm me down. When I had finally calmed down, her parents came to me and said that my parents had left and they were going to make sure that they never got to speak to me until I was ready to come face to face with them. Then, they suggested that I should really consider a legal recourse, like emancipation, from my parents because it had become increasingly obvious that they couldn't care about me and it was time that I cut them out of my life for good. So, after discussing this with Fiona's parents, I decided to speak to a lawyer, and we are now considering emancipation. I'm still very confused about it because this is a huge decision to make, and I don't want to regret anything in the future, but honestly, at the rate that things are going, I don't think I will because yesterday, my parents got in touch with me again, against my will. Last evening, I received an email. I knew from the address that it was from my parents, so I tried really hard not to open it, but curiosity got the better of me, and I ended up reading it. 
They had essentially started off by telling me that the reason they had even surprised me with that trip was because one of my father's clients had opened up a new spa and resort in the Pecanos, and this was a perk for my dad and the family. He just decided to utilize this opportunity around the same time as my birthday, but when Alex brought up my finals, then they didn't want my grades to slip later on, only because I had taken the vacation with them, just a couple of weeks to go for my exams, and they couldn't believe that I had misconstrued something ugly and tried to get revenge on them for it. It made them feel like they had not raised me right. Alex herself was upset, and she only wanted to be a good, concerned big sister to me, so there was no need for me to overreact the way that I had. It was all a bunch of baloney, and I was really annoyed, so I almost stopped reading the email halfway through, but then the next half was all about how upset they were that I had involved other people in our family drama and aired our dirty linen in public, because this was something that they had never wanted or even expected to happen. They said that, regardless of how many fights we have had, I have never come up to them and told them directly exactly what issues I was having with my parents, so they were never able to work on them, they claimed that if I had just spoken to them once and discussed my feelings with them, then they might have been able to make things right with me, but instead, I had taken such a drastic step. They said that the list of chores that Alex had left with me was a tad bit too much, but even then, I should have called them up later on and confronted them about it, and they would have come back immediately if they knew that I was feeling left out and neglected. However, the way that I had chosen to deal with the situation was really unexpected, and they felt bad about everything because apparently they genuinely didn't want to hurt me, and this was just an unfortunate misunderstanding blown out of proportion. They want me to talk to them and sort things out, but I don't know what I want to do right now. I'm having very mixed feelings about this, so please help me out. AITA for throwing a party and exposing my parents amongst all their co-workers and business associates after they left me out while they went on vacation? Update 1, okay, so most of you think that what I did was completely fine, and they deserved it, and that is nothing that I have to apologize for, so I have decided I'm not going to apologize. I have blocked the email address that they sent that email to me from, so they wouldn't be able to contact me another time. I know that they can just make another one and keep trying to text me, but I'll just keep blocking them, and I have made up my mind now, whatever they try to say to me, I'm just not going to respond to it or even try to read it. It's just not worth it, all that's going to do is mess me up in the head even more. And as for emancipation, I had decided that I'm going through with it, it's a huge deal, and I know that I'm still too young, but Fiona and her parents have reassured me that no matter what happens, they are going to be by my side, and I have nothing to worry about. They have told me that they can even legally adopt me if that's going to make me feel less nervous, and I actually think that it might, but I haven't thought about that yet. Right now, we are only focusing on the emancipation, we have spoken to a lawyer, and the paperwork is being processed at the moment. I truly don't know how my parents are going to react to it because when they sent me that email, I could tell that they were not happy about the fact that I'm choosing to live with Fiona and her parents, as of now, which doesn't even make sense to me because, from the way that I have been treated my entire life, it has become very obvious to me that they really don't want me that much. At least they don't want me in their home as much as they want Alex around them. That's very obvious to me, and yeah, they are still trying to reach out to me, and that was just very confusing for me. I have a feeling that they only wanted to get me back because they wanted to fix their reputation and their image, nothing else. I'm just very confused at the moment. Right now, all I can do is wait for them to receive the paperwork and see how they react to it. It's been a couple of days since my post and they have not tried to reach out to me again after that email, so I don't know what they're feeling at the moment. I know that things cannot be good for them either because there were a bunch of people at the party that I had invited, and I think I heard from people that Alex and her boyfriend broke up, but nobody knows the reason except for me, of course. Update 2, hi, guys, so a couple of days back, my parents finally were served with the paperwork for my legal emancipation, and they were not happy about it, which was quite surprising for me. They called up Fiona's parents, and there was a huge fight since apparently, they believed that Fiona and her parents had put me up to this and were controlling me, they did not think that I was doing this on my own will, which didn't make sense to me because, I mean, do they realize how badly they've treated me in the past? Of course, I was doing this of my own free will, nobody even had to force me to think twice. 
I had sort of started anticipating this kind of reaction out of them after I had posted my last update since a lot of you had told me that they were doing exactly what I thought they were doing. They only wanted me back so that they could show everyone that we were a happy family, and whatever I had said at the party, it was just me being bratty. But I did not go back to them, and that's what really pissed them off, the fact that I'm finally standing up to them. They cannot take that. Well, too bad because it's happening, they can call Fiona's parents all the names that they want, but it's not going to change the fact that they deserve this, they do not deserve to be my parents, and now I'm finally going to be free from them. I couldn't overhear much, but Fiona told me that apparently, my parents have called her parents every name in the book that they could think of and have said that they were going to fight them and take this to court if it was necessary because they had no right to put me up to all of this nonsense and that they were going to tolerate it. They were pretty pissed off and had even threatened to hurt them, which I thought was crazy because I hope they realize it's not legal and it's just going to make them come off worse. The way they have spoken to Fiona's parents about me, it just kind of reiterated what I already believed about them, they did not want me back because they thought of me as a daughter whom they loved, but more because they wanted to fix their image in front of other people because it's not once had they said that they wanted to speak to me, or they wanted me back. They just kept saying that they knew Fiona's parents wanted to ruin their reputation by acting like the saviors for me, and trying to show the world that I have been mistreated in my own home, which is why I had come to them, but they were not going to allow it to happen. Apparently, they had been yelling on the phone about how I had been an entitled spoiled brat, and the fact that Fiona and her parents were supporting it only meant that they were not the ones who are fit to be parents. I'm pretty sure if they actually loved me like a daughter, they would have been more concerned about my well-being and would have tried to talk to me rather than yell at Fiona's parents and imply that they were trying to ruin my parents' reputation. Why would they even want to do that? Fiona's parents have not known my parents for long, they have only known each other through the two of us, so there's no reason for them to be competing against them, it's not like there's any competition anyway since Fiona's parents are a lot more successful in life and are also much kinder and more compassionate. But my parents are so concerned about the so-called image that they think that Fiona's parents are just like them and are incapable of thinking about me and are just trying to pull them down. I so desperately want to tell my parents that they are not pretending to be my saviors by trying to help me out here, but they actually are my saviors because it is them that I needed saving from, and if they had just understood that in the first place, they would have been sorry for everything that they had done, instead of trying to stir up even more drama. Her parents have given me strict instructions not to reach out to them, no matter how tempted I feel, because it's just not worth it and I know that they got the phone call from my parents a couple of days ago, and after fighting with them on the phone call and giving me only the details that they thought were necessary for me to know, they told me that they had recorded the phone call. And my parents were really stupid because they could use it as evidence for why I deserve to be emancipated. From them, they also told me that they wanted me to think about whether I wanted them to legally adopt me or not, and I ended up saying yes since I really like them, and I also know that this is going to piss my parents off even more, but that's not really a reason, especially because I genuinely feel like they are extremely kind-hearted and lovely human beings, and having Fiona was my sister is going to be a bonus, so I'm all in. They have told me that they are going to speak to the lawyer once more to start the paperwork for that as well since it might also help with my emancipation case. Honestly, this just keeps getting better, and I couldn't have been more grateful to them. Updates 3, Hi, something terrible happened today. Long story short, Alex beat the crap out of me after school today. My last class, English, was being held in the east wing of the school, and when I was out of class, she had a bunch of her friends literally corner me. I am, unfortunately, always the last person to leave class because I'm very slow at packing my things, and by the time I exited the classroom, most people had already left. When I saw Alex and her friends standing outside, I felt a bit intimidated, but I didn't let it show because that would only make them win. Anyway, when I started to leave the classroom, they got all up in my face and said that I was not allowed to leave. Then they made everyone else who was loitering in the class get out and told me that they had some chores to settle with me. I tried to square up to them and keep a level head so that the fear wouldn't show on my face, but they didn't seem to care. Alex grabbed my arm and walked with me outside while I yelled at her to let me go, everyone else was loud as well, and nobody else could hear me. 
Then, they took me to the janitor's closet and locked the inside after shoving me in forcefully. I can't bang on the door, but they were standing outside, and I think even if people heard me, they wouldn't dare to do anything because Alex and her friends are in the senior-most classes and have a nasty rep after putting me in there for almost five minutes, Alex allowed me to come out, and by then, pretty much everyone in that wing of the school had cleared out, and it was just me against them. That's when the first slap landed on my face, and she started screaming at me. She called me selfish and said that I was ungrateful to our parents, and then came the real reason why she was so pissed, she started accusing me of being the reason her boyfriend had broken up with her. Then she slammed my head against the concrete, and that's when I started feeling really dizzy, so she took advantage of that and just kept pounding me with her fists, and her friends just watched and laughed. It was extremely painful, and I tried to defend myself, but Alex was several inches taller than me and much heavier, so there was not much that I could do. At one point, I literally just started cowering against the wall, and she still continued to beat me. Once she felt satisfied, she kicked me one last time, and then she and her friends left while I cried against the wall. About 15 minutes later, Fiona finally found me sitting on the floor, crying really badly. When I told her what had happened, she helped me get up, and instead of walking home together, we decided to take a car back home because I was in no condition to walk. Once we got home, I told her parents everything, and they looked pretty grim, so they contacted the school immediately, and then the police. It has been only an hour since then, and they have been talking on the phone ever since, so they are pretty busy, but Fiona is taking care of me since I'm pretty banged up. The bruises are just starting to show up, and everything hurts, but I know that Alex will get her karma for this, and she'll get it pretty soon. Update 4, hi, so there are a lot of things that I want to talk about, and I will just try to keep it short and sweet. Last week, Alex beat me up, and thankfully, the school stood up for me and shared the security footage from that wing of the building with the police, so it was pretty easy to charge her with a misdemeanor, and she got community service to make up for it. But the best part is that she got suspended for the next six weeks as well, and that means that she won't be able to attend prom, something that she had been really looking forward to. She will also not be able to sit for her finals with the rest of her class, she will have to be seated separately, and that means that she can't cheat her way out of it. I think it's well deserved, and I felt quite vindicated when Fiona told me about all of this. Another great thing that happened was, after the whole debacle with Alex, my parents decided to give up my right. That's right, they terminated their parental rights over me, and the paperwork has been signed and everything, so I'm finally free, and Fiona's parents are in the process of legally adopting me, so I couldn't be more grateful to them for that. My parents said that after everything that had happened, they don't want me in their family anymore, and I know that they are going to try and make it seem like I'm the one at fault, but I don't think anybody's going to buy that, so they can try their best, it doesn't matter to me. Anyway, to be honest, I'm finally part of a happy family now, and I can vouch for the fact that my new sister and parents are going to be far better than the ones I originally had. I really can't believe that things are finally working out for me, and this is probably the happiest that I have felt in a really long time, so much so that I had actually forgotten about my finals coming up, but now Fiona and I are going to crack on, and we are going to show everyone what I'm made of. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.